What's going on everybody? It is Triple Crown 24 back today with Miguel Cabrera registry video number seven and it's been a minute since my last one. The reason for that is because the deals have just not been there. Um, a lot of the slabs have been really expensive, way more than I'm willing to pay. I'm talking upwards of like $30 for a 10 on even just a regular base card and it just hasn't really been a priority. I can get some pretty cool raw cards for the same price, so kind of put it on hold. Even the nines are starting to creep up there where they're getting a little out of my range, and the ones that have gone for cheap, I've lost the auctions on, so just kind of uh, something that's been a little bit on hold, but I do have four new ones to show off today, and I have some more that's coming back in a PSA submission at some point that I will show you, but uh, that might be a few weeks before we get to that, or even maybe a little bit longer. I have a lot of videos uh, backlogged right now and trying not to flood the channel with too much content, but four cards to show off today. Let's go ahead and get into it. First one, these ones are all coming back from my most recent PSA submission reveal, so if you have already seen that video, then you will be familiar with these, but this is the 2012 Topps Archives uh, 3D version, so this is based on the 1968, I wanna say, 3D test set. Uh, from Tops, and that's something that Archives does quite frequently where they will visit a top set of the past or sometimes with their inserts they will visit um, an insert set or a subset, different set that Tops put out over the years uh, from past releases, so they went with the 68 one here. I believe this was the first year of Archives release and I've had this card for a very long time. I thought it would look really cool with the frosted edges. Unfortunately, they did put the baggy in there. I was kind of hoping to avoid that, but not a big deal. I think it just looks really cool in the slab, so wanted to get that one slabbed up. I wasn't sure if it was a 9 or a 10. It's kind of hard with some of those uh, types of cards like that, but it doesn't really matter too much to me. I'm doing it more so for the presentation. All right, next up we have my favorite Topps Allen & Ginter design here, 2013. Really great shot of Cabrera. This set in general is just very well done. I think the pictures are just right. I'm not a huge fan of the Ginters that just have the headshots for the most part like they did in 2018, which speaking of, I'll talk about that more here in a minute. But I like it when they at least have like the upper body shot um, from the waist up. I think that's a good picture framework for Ginter. I think they're going to go back to the headshot again uh, this year of 2019's release. Not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me there, but I think this one was just, with the blue borders and the font, extremely well done, and sure enough, Cabrera was card number one in that set as well, which is kind of a cool little thing, because sometimes the Tigers don't get as much hobby love, uh, especially in recent times when they've been really bad, and understandably so, because nobody really wants to collect cards of a bad team, and they are certainly struggling this year. I think that they might give the Orioles and the Marlins a run for their money at the bottom of the league. So 2013 Ginter, one of my favorite designs. Happy to have that. And then this one, one I submitted as well. 2018 Ginter. This, I mean, this one is cool. It's got him with the bat on the shoulders. And the headshots, I, I don't mind them. Um, I still think that this is a good-looking card. It's not, like, my favorite Ginter design ever, but it's solid looking. I don't know if there's really been a Ginter design that I really despised over the years. There's not really any I can think of um, off the top of my head. I'm still trying to go through them uh, here while I talk, but just looks really nice. I think that the Ginter slabbed up, shout out to Mike O there, are always a nice little addition to the collection, so figured why not just uh, get them slabbed when I can. This last one is a purchase. I'm very excited about this one, and this is a good example of buy the card, not the grade. It's a 2001 Bowman Heritage Miguel Cabrera prospect slash rookie. He actually didn't make his MLB debut till 2003, but sometimes people call us prospect cards, rookie cards, whatever you want to call it. This is a short print in the 2001 Bowman Heritage set. Not quite as coveted as the Albert Pujols and Ichiro cards from this set, but still a very sought-after Miguel Cabrera card. 
Nate Top eighty five four zero one. I was actually talking to him on the phone not all that long ago, and he told me that he had this card. And when he said that, I kind of registered in my mind. I need to go out and get one of these because I've been meaning to for quite some time. And sure enough, one popped up the next day at auction. So I went ahead and put it on the watch list and I got it for $15 plus shipping. And in a 10, this is probably going to cost you over $100. So what went wrong with it or what um, made it not get a 10, if I had to guess, is this wax stain on the back. Let's see here. And they did put gum in these packs. Uh, the gum was in a, <clears throat> excuse me, in a seal. And usually the short prints, if I remember correctly, are the last card in the pack. So I don't feel like the gum would rub up against it. That is a possibility. I feel like it's more so an issue of uh, the wax being on it. Whatever that stain may be, I feel like that is probably the biggest reason I got a nine. There's maybe like one little small issue of one of the corners. I can't remember which one, but I don't think it would be enough to really knock it from a 10. So uh, to me, whenever a card has an issue with the back, it's something that is something that I try to cash in on because we don't really look at the backs of cards too often, to be honest. You know, when we get a card, um, I don't know if uh, many people are buying it for the back necessarily. It's mostly for the image on the front and the artwork that's on the front. So that was kind of my uh, mindset with this one. And a 10, just given how expensive it is, give me the 9 um, all day. So very excited to add that one in. That's the one that I've been looking at for quite some time. So four new additions to the registry today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what your favorite pickup was, as always, down below. Really appreciate you checking out today's video. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one.